welcome to the surf and turf show everybody first still the same old line uh you could be anywhere in the world right now but you're here with us for that we thank you yeah thank you thank you very much and welcome uh podcast yes this is turf again and this is surf hello surf hello turf <laughs> <laughs> So uh, at the beginning, I would like to introduce a uh, uh, couple of players that's in our group, even though they are now here with us. But we can post the picture later <laughs> if yes. you kind of want to know who they are. Uh, first, the gentleman is named Ken. Uh, full name is Kenneth. Uh, he is the gentleman that's uh, helping us in the team to uh, reconnect with some of the co-op companies or clients that's out there. Maybe you heard his voice before, Ken. And uh, basically, he just talked to you guys, uh, want to get the correct email, okay, correct phone number, so we can send the uh, uh, right information to the right party. Also, the other gentleman, his name is uh, Carlos. We want to thank him also. He's the gentleman that in charge in Mexico for the quality control. So he has a couple of guys under him, follow him around also, uh, because as you know, we do have uh, several process plans uh, that process on the daily basis. So he just go to point A to point B to C to D to make sure all the current client that we have, the receiving the product quality is right, is what they order, and there is no miss on uh, anything for that uh, we want a special thanks to Ken and Carlos for the effort and hard work they put in we forgot to mention I think also on the last time uh, Eduardo yes Eduardo Eduardo yes Eduardo is helping us on the sales part he's doing all the Hispanic markets correct yeah he speaks a, a very well I Spanish yes and English fluent fluent, fluent Spanish <laughs> And uh, yeah, so whenever you need uh, Spanish speaking, you can ask for him. Yeah, he's he's doing also, he has knowledge on the seafood. He's been on this industry as well uh, for a long time. So he's uh, now with us, helping us and the family is growing. Yes. We want to talk about the situation that is happening right now on the seafood industry down in Mexico. I don't know about other countries, but in Mexico, it's... Um, well, I don't know if I want to call it a war zone right now. Or a I don't big know. wave. A, a big, big wave, wave is coming. Big wave. The blue crab season is here. Yes. We've been expecting this for the last two or three months. Yep. Now it's here. Now it's a nightmare. Okay, it's a, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah everybody's trying. It is, it's everybody's trying to, to lock as much product as we can. And uh, but we're ready to start filling up orders. We um, we are we are grateful that we have everything pretty much pre-sold. We have a lot of customers, and we have uh, more customers are calling us that they want product. So we're trying to be fair with everyone, give a little bit of uh, of uh, the product to all our customers. That why that way. Everybody's happy. Yes, right? correct. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as we mentioned uh, before, is uh, with all the clients, we already work out the schedule. So, you know, hopefully we can be shipping out uh, ASAP. Everybody's going to be happy. Because, uh, um, in a way, it's an unexpected situation. Okay. Because uh, in the previous years, normally the season is going to be starting April or May, uh, never so late in July. Uh, because this year the weather change, it was very cold. So the blue crab, as you guys know, when it's cold, they hibernate. When it's hot, they start coming out. So the allow catch season has been pushed back, pushed back. Actually, it was going to start at the beginning of June, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah. But the government was trying to protect the, the female laying eggs, so they pushed back again. Okay, now... As uh, July 1st, the door has been reopened. Okay. Yeah. There's a science behind this. It's not like everybody just can go. There's blue crab and everybody can go and catch. The government in Mexico, they, they do their their, their own um, 
I don't know how you call it, ocean, oceanology or something. There's a technique to see if if the blue crab, the females already left the eggs, and if the if it's safe to start catching blue crab. If uh, there's a lot of things that they need to analyze, and then they they decide when it's good to start catching blue crab. That way we don't affect the uh, <coughs> the nature, and we can have blue crab every year. So, but finally we're here and that's why we want to talk a little bit so you guys understand that when you see a blue crab on your dish is there's a lot of things that needs to be happen yes. in order to do that. So the process starts first months before we start catching the blue crab. There's a process. The, the, the fishermen need to uh, check all their um, nets, all their cages when they catch the blue crab. They need to replace the ones that are in bad shape, get new ones. So it's a it's a financial process, very strong financial process. On oh, us, <laughs> we need to be taken care On of. Us. <laughs> yes. So they they need to check the the the, 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 um, the cages. They need to check the boats, the engines, all the tools that they need to have in order to go on fishing. This product is a uh, catch in little boats. We call it pangas. I think we mentioned that word on a first or the yes. second podcast. Correct. But we use pangas, which is, those are small boats. Those boats has a capacity to put, depending on the fish or depending on the on the crab or depending on the on the seafood that you're catching, they have the capacity to put one ton per boat. Yeah, so sometimes those little boats go twice a day, depending if it, there's a lot of product to catch, they can go twice a day, but they start at three, four o'clock in the morning. So that's correct. Yeah. So yeah. so seeing that is a process. They need to they need to have all the equipment ready before the season starts. Now, when the season starts, what happens? You see all these fishermen going out there. So on the area where the blue crab is, um, what they do is the fishermen go out to the ocean. They send the, the cages. The next day they come back. They, they lift the cages. There's some uh, tooling and there's some electrical, mechanical things that, that, that bring the cage up uh, to the level of the ocean. And then they open the cage and they put the blue crab in the middle of the of the panga how yes. do you mention the panga right yeah, the panga yes the panga this product is live this is live yeah i've been one time on one of those boats and don't want you don't want to get close well, no they are used to but <laughs> yeah they bite you they're trying they are defending themselves so they're very aggressive once once they they are out of their environment but they they catch it And once they they recover all the blue crabs that are on the cages and and um, they start uh, driving back, they put those all those products into big containers with a uh, with a lot of uh, ice. Yes, correct. Yeah, these containers with a lot of that ice. What what happens to the blue crab is is the same thing that happens in the ocean when it's a very cold weather. They start hibernate. Hibernate. Yeah. Yes. Because because. Uh, blue crab, they actually have a very strong life. So once uh, they've been caught, they stay alive. So during the ice, you know, they hibernate. So once it get into our plant, get in process, they are alive also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you need to process this uh, blue crab alive. If you cannot process uh, when, when they're dead. Um, that particular animal and some other on uh, some other crabs and and some other shellfish when they feel in danger and and they create like kind of like a bacteria or something Correct. and yeah. then they they um, they eliminate they kill themselves and and the meat turns bad so yeah all this we need to be very careful on, on what you're doing because the quality needs to be Uh, there has to be a lot of quality control on the process of these these uh, blue crabs. So what happened? Then we take it to the factory, which are n never far from the from the ocean. We take it to the factories, and we start processing the blue crab. Now the blue crab is in ice, so you can do two process on the blue crab. You can process it whole and if you process it whole you just need to put some rubbers on the cloth. That way, when you froze the product, doesn't break. 
and then you can process clean. So clean means that you take the shell and the guts, and then you clean all, all the all the guts from the inside. You you take the shell on the top. On the top on the top and then you take all the guts you clean it you put it on a, a water with a, a disinfection um, liquid um, and then you start packing basically this this is this is more in detail yeah but i'm trying to to explain it on an easy way yes but and uh, that's that's the process on the blue crab then you pack it and then you need to be careful. Well, you need to classify the sizes. There's sizes on the on the whole blue crab. There's sizes on the clean blue crabs. Uh, some companies they use the, the blue crab for crab or the crab meat. They yes. take out the meat and they separate in jumbo. There's there's different sizes on the crab meat, which we sell a little bit of that, but it's 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 more complicated process. We use more on the besides uh, you know with with all the order we need to be fulfilling right now, we really don't have the time to go to uh to detail on the crab meat. So we just been focusing or we will be focusing on the hull and also the clint. Yes. The crab meat is uh, uh, there's uh, <coughs> like Indonesia is very strong on yes. doing that. They send a lot of product from Indonesia on that that particular item. But um yes, on the blue crab that's a, that's more or less the process um we we always have people checking the quality, people checking that the crab is still alive. Uh, for the people that, so every time I tell my wife about this process, she tells me, "Oh, poor blue crab, they're gonna be in pain." No, they are not in not pain in because they are sleeping. Yes, they are frozen. Yes, uh, so they're still alive, but they are um, they are uh, sleeping. So yes. don't worry about that part. Right. <laughs> Anyway, that's that's the process. Then we pack it. Then we need to put it on a on the freezer. Then the then ship it to the to the U.S. Then all the paperwork for for crossing the border, complying with all the quality issues, all the standards. We talk about that on the last podcast. But yes, it's very interesting. All these things when you go to the boat the next day, they bring the the catching uh, nets, then take it to the factory. Everything has to be on ice. Processing the blue crab with rovers. You, if you see the speed, this uh, all these workers down down in Mexico putting the rovers or cleaning the blue crab is amazing, and they know what to do. It's very interesting to see all these people how how fast and how efficient they can do that. Yes, was they're very to, professional. Yes. I was trying to put some rubbers and it took me like five minutes when they were doing like on one balls. crab. Yeah, on one crab and they were doing like two cases already. Well, yes, that's more or less the process. And um, we are now also we just um, gonna start showing. They're gonna you're gonna start seeing um, Ken, our customer service guy, and. Uh, through Nora, you met her last time on the blast, on the email blast that we sent to you guys. We're going to start introducing a red crab. Yes. A red crab. And that's uh, it's no known in the market. No one is selling it. So I cannot tell you where it's from. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's from Mexico. It's a red crab. And by nature, the blue crab is, is, that's how you call it, the name is and blue brownish yes and when you cook it all these animals turn red but this crab that we're going to start bringing is red by nature which red is nature. very interesting the uh, weight size is average as the blue crab between 200 300 grams up 500 yeah yeah, yeah some of them they go big and the interesting thing and now I'll, I'll try it I, actually I took a trip with my son a long time ago and we try it the interesting thing is the flavor the flavor on that red crab my son doesn't like uh, a lot of seafood but that one he, he eat a bunch of those yeah. but anyway um this red crab um, we need to bring it pre-cook also it's pretty much the same process on this particular crab you need to pre-cook that way the doesn't grow any type of bacteria uh that's a different treatment that you need to do on this crab but i don't know if you want to tell them the taste because it doesn't taste like blue crab so it's a taste how should i say it if you put it the simple way it tastes like dungeon's crab and combination with uh king crab yep sweet uh flavored creamy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, well, once once we bring here, you know, 
try it yourself. Don't take my word for it, but try it yourself. I think uh, everybody will love it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because the flavor. I was surprised about the flavor. I was trying to bring that crab to uh, fulfill some uh, blue crab orders, but when I try it, wow, yeah, this is another market. This is a king crab market. Uh, uh, Dungeon king. Dungeon king crab. But yeah, this is this is uh, something new. We're bringing the first batch of samples, I think, uh, by the middle of July of mm -hmm. this year. If you're interested, send us an email. You can go to www.surfplusturf.com and um, yeah, you can send us a, I'm interested on, on the on the red crab that you mentioned on the podcast. We can send you every anything, a cup, a palette or a case or something. But yeah, it's something that is going to be very interesting. And the interesting thing also is the price. The price, the price of the king crab legs right now is on the roof because all the things that are going on with Russia right now. But this is... It's not again. It, it cannot replace the king crab. What we were talking with Richard, the market has a price, and you know, good guys know that. So yes. The market has a price, so people can the the, the families can go outside to a restaurant, and you, you can pay just at at some point a price for any type of dish. Yeah. Everybody has a cap. Yeah. Everybody has a Lawrence. Once you cross that line, you know people start backing off. If you need a some than else to, I wouldn't say primarily, but at least temporarily to replace those uh, high uh, priced items, you know, maybe this uh, this is something you should be thinking about. Yeah, yeah. It, can be a, it's, it can be an option. Price wise is very competitive. Flavor wise is, yeah, it's very good. We're good to go. Yep. There's, yeah. There's a new baby also we found down there in Oh Mexico. my God. Yeah. I know this product is very strong in Chile, but also is very pricey. And we're also going to start bringing, um, they call it centolla in yeah. Mexico. And in I know in Chile they call it centolla as well. Okay. The spider king crab. The spider king crab. Yes. In Mexico we have a spider king crab. With this, we're going to do. This basically has the same as a, 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 king, crab. a king crab. So we're yeah. bringing the, the, the legs, the rack. They call it the rack, the leg, legs rack. Very, very nice. Very good flavor as well. Um, but the only, the only difference is um, versus the king crab from Alaska and Russia is that this one, the skin is is dark. Is, 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 is strong. When you cook it, turns red. The skin is strong. So you really need the, those the crackers. The crackers. You really yes. need those crackers. Because I know the, the, the king crab from Russia or Alaska, yeah. you can do it with, sometimes with your hand. Yes, you don't correct. need that much, the tools. No, you don't. Yeah. But with this one, you're going to really need, need the tools. It's, it's, it's more entertaining. Yes. You got to work hard for the food, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, interesting because we're bringing those three items. Um, we're gonna once also we once we have a set of samples and a little bit of inventory, we're gonna start doing a lot of promotion. Yes, correct. And um, we're gonna start doing a lot of promotion, and we are going to tell you what we can do, how much volume we can offer you guys. Same thing as the little red crab. Price wise, this Centoya, this uh, spider king crab is very, very, very competitive. Yes. Very aggressive on the price. Yes. yes. So don't get us wrong. We can raise the price, but that's not the idea. The no. idea is to for us to offer you another option where you guys can make money and we can all of us be part of the of the distribution channel with these new items. I think we're gonna have it. Also, by the middle of the month, inventory and everything here. So, again, if you're interested, uh, send us an email and we can work something out on that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Take a look, try it. You know, you're going to, I mean, I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just give yourself an option to at least, uh, you know, haul your clients for right now until those uh, expensive price uh, drops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give it a try. It's a story time, okay. <laughs> this is like three times. Maybe some of the clients or you guys that are listening out there wonder how did a Chinese guy, Mexican guy end up together? Okay, so this is this, uh, I would say this is a funny story. A long time ago when we first started, uh, we had a client 
come with us from uh, Taiwan. So we take him to Mexico, you know, check out our facility, uh, you know, talk to the head of fishermen. So this way we know exactly how he uh, wanted, you know, how we need to process his needs. So in the nighttime, of course, you know, we're going to eat and drink, have a good time, right? So after dinner, we end up in a bar. Now, uh, it could happen anywhere, guys, okay? Because once there's some alcohol in your system, try to be a bigger man than you are, right? Conflicts happens. So what actually happened was this. We was at this table having a good time. Now, I see like a couple tables away, the server, a lady, uh, was, uh, I mean, our server basically was kind of harassed by another client. So I just stand up and call her here, pretend like we want to order something. During this time, fortunately at that bar, uh, the bouncer came in and uh, they re realized what happened. They just uh, threw that guy out. It should be ended right there. But for some reason, this guy was able to come back into the bar. Okay. I don't know where you're going now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that story. So, you know, we just ha having conversation, like nobody paying too much attention. But like from corner of my eye or my spider sense, I feel like that someone is uh, standing behind me, try to do something to me or something, okay? But certainly, I just see Turf. That's what we should call him, right? Turf. Just stand up from the table and just reach the hand behind, uh, like through me to the back. And it just, I feel like he grabbed somebody and I turn around. I see him handle this guy, just bang, throw him on the floor. That's one of those stories that like, you know, you know, this guy got your back. You know, that that's, that's pretty, pretty important in uh in the partner relationship you know someone trusts you 100 percent got your back 100 percent so we can all work on the same route toward to the same goal you know that that's that moment like after we've been working together for a couple of years you know we build a, a stronger bond and we're up till today no, oh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're yes. my body, man. I need yes. to protect you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, I, 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 I just remember the story, you know, uh, and uh, anybody that talked to me, you know, a couple of the guys, they was wondering, hey, how did you two end up together? I always tell them this story. So before you guys ask, I share this story to you. As Richard mentioned, this thing can happen any any surf, please. Uh, sorry, surf. <laughs> Surf mentioned this this thing can happen in any any part of the of the world, but yep. I know the faces yeah. <laughs> when they want to do something. Yes, but uh, feel like the movie Kong Air. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, well, it was a long time ago, right? Ten years. Yeah, when you was still a strong man. Yes, and <laughs> I can I can do the same thing with my belly now. <laughs> that's that's um, a little bit of the stories down in Mexico. So. We got more. We have more. Yeah. Yes. We save it for the next ones. Correct. We're trying to do things different on depending on, on what's going on on the markets. And we're happy you guys listening to us. Actually, I don't know if I mentioned you. I was checking the the, the statistics on the podcast. Uh -huh. And it's growing. It's growing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's growing. Every, if there's more people and more people every time watching us and seeing us and... Um, we we love to see your emails with some comments. So we can address any subject regarding seafood. Regarding seafood, <laughs> I mean, any suggestions you guys out there have for us, please tell us. Because after we started doing this podcasting, uh, uh, even before I was listening to some of the guys out there, but now I pay more attention to it. You know, I see the numbers like 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. I was like, oh my God, how these guys do it? You know, just that's why I say, if you have any suggestions out there, please let us know. If you want to add some pictures, add some anime voice. We, just, can, we can ask the technician here to yes, help us yeah. to improve this part. Yes. <laughs> also, I want to thank my friend Surf on uh, the gift that 
you bring me today, which I'm wearing. I wanna I wanna show it. Well, I don't know if everybody goes on on, on YouTube. Maybe some people just listen to us yes, on correct. the on the Spotify. Yeah. Spotify. Whoever goes to YouTube, we have this podcast. All the podcasts we have it on YouTube, so you can see our uh, uh, ugly eyes, ugly, <laughs> ugly, <no. laughs> our faces. You can meet plus last time. Yeah, yeah. So I love this. Yes, um, surf uh, wife was in China. Yes, he went. Uh, Miss Surf, Miss Surf. Yes, <laughs> yes, Miss Surf. She is. I was. I was feeling so so sad because she needed to spend. She was like two, three weeks. No, months. One month. One month yes. on quarantine. Yeah, seven. Uh, it's fourteen plus seven plus seven. Yeah, so it's once you get there, you land there. Okay, you need to quarantine for fourteen days. Even though you are uh, negative on your COVID yeah. test, yeah, it doesn't they matter. Don't care. They don't care. Yeah, then you need to do go to like uh, uh, the hometown. Okay, wherever your final destination is, that's another seven days. Then you gotta go home for another seven days. And that is just the policy at that particular hometown. And different regions, okay, I'm sorry, different province, they have different policies. You know, some people was even 14 plus 14 plus 7. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so she went for three months and one month was uh, just locked in, in a room. Yes. Yeah, I was like, I, I, I used to talk to Surf and she was telling me, she was telling me she was desperate at the end, right? Yes. But uh, everything went well. Yep. We have our gifts. Yes. Yeah. I, I got my necklace. This is for protection, so yes. I can more. I can go now to Mexico more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look. Look at these guys. It's a very nice necklace. Camera one. <laughs> I was asking uh, Surf. Once you go there, how you see China on the inside? Because you can see a lot of things on the news, but inside is when you really see what's happening. So interesting that they are still struggling a little bit, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the inline part, you know, uh, they're still struggling a little bit. Yeah. Because the uh, the COVID situation uh, is still happening over there, but it's uh, still happening here. It's it's kind of different, you know, the the policy, how the government's dealing with it. And we are now getting into the politicians. Okay? We're just talking about the situations. So because uh, everybody facing uh, uh, different different ways, you know, over here is more. Even though there is still COVID here, okay, but most area that you go to, they don't uh, wear face mask anymore because everybody take the you know the antivirus. Yeah, the so, shots. Yeah, the shots. Yeah. Virus. But in China, they still uh, doing the the lockdown policy, all the face masks everywhere policy, and they, they have like this uh, a chip car, you know, it has th uh, three different colors: red, yellow, and green. So if it's green, of course, that means you can go anywhere with a face mask on. But if you are red, that means you need to be quarantined at your home until uh, you have been checked and uh turn back green again like what happened in shanghai it was pretty pretty bad the whole city was shutting down again so the different ways has different ways uh different results i guess you know they all want the best for their people yes yeah that's and how i see it yeah and, and and there's a lot of beliefs out there everybody has said their belief but on yeah. our end also we are doing uh, all the process and everything that we bring is on the we've been doing that before COVID, so yeah we also comply with the, all the healthy issues and all these correct things. that's something that we do it every day so we just need to take care of ourselves yeah we make a couple of trips last month mm -hmm. yeah that's this month I, this month and last month we went to a place that i never been before it was nice We went to visit a couple of customers over there. They treat us very well. I like that trip. There's a very nice people over there. The folks are very friendly. Yes, very friendly. They take us to a nice restaurant. And I try for the first time in my life. Alligator. 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 Alligator yeah. nuggets. <laughs> it was nuggets. Yes, it was nuggets. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm not a big fan. But I wanted to try it because it's a very popular dish over there. The flavor was strong. Okay. Um, you didn't try it, right? No, no, I didn't. 
Yeah. Try it. I still have the, you know, uh, something. Yeah. I'm crazy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's, it's that like I have this tri uh, trimingo neural issue that are around right here. So it's a neural problem, which is, you know, you can tell people you're crazy because you're, you're taking medicines for your neural problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we try those uh, alligator nuggets, and and flavor is strong. The meat is is okay. I had it before. I had it before. Huh? Before I had the problem. Yeah, like about a few years back. Then we went to visit on the other side of the country, mm -hmm. the upper north part. Up north part to see another customers also same very nice people. Yes, these companies very big. They have their own factories. They have like five factories in uh, in, in in Alaska. North, yeah, I like traveling. I like traveling because you can you can feel how is the people in different states, small small states, big cities. So far, everybody's treating us very well. Everybody's open to do business. Everybody's looking for new opportunities. I rent. We oh, actually, we rent a car. No, we're not gonna do advertisement for them. <laughs> well, they haven't paid us. <laughs> yeah, they haven't paid us. <laughs> But but they they I rent is the first time I drive a electric car. Yes, and it was funny. It's a nice experience. I guess for everybody it's different. Right? For me, it's this even on my cell phone. You know, when I see the battery percent go down, once a pot a go below the forty percent, I have that little panic in me. Start telling me, hey, you need to find a charger. You know, plug it in. And when it's below 20, I just start like running around, you know, and yes. it just so happened that car. Yeah, they, that, they don't gave us full battery. It was 38%. Yeah, 38%. Yeah, I already time, reached the first stage when we yes. in the car. Like, it's like when we, by the time we arrived to the, to, to our meeting, we were on 29. 20, 29? 29, yes. 29. Yeah. So we figured out how to charge that thing, but you need to have a special app. With a credit card on it, so yeah. it's not like you just plug and. Always, always. I mean, I I never drive a electric car before, so I always listen to people saying. I'm assuming that the charge is free. Like I see people charge at the at home, of course, or at the malls. But this place that this city that we went to, like you actually need to pay. So I yeah. figure, yeah. Um, but we couldn't visit any more places because we run out of battery. So. Yes. I mean, by the time we got back, it was like 13%. Maybe less. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it, it passed my danger zone, you know, because once you pass the 15, you, it's showing red, all those, like, no. Yeah, so we end up going to the airport earlier. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. Like three hours earlier than normal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we are visiting customers once a month. Yes. We can go visit you. We just we just uh, finalize our uh, catalog. With the, all new this, the, one. the new updated one. The new updated catalog. So if you want a copy, we can mail it to you. We have an, an electronic version. Yes. It's very nice. You can see by families, snappers, groupers, uh, cards. Bass, yeah, so you can, you can see it as a, as a family, shellfish products. Yes. I, even though you're not buying from us, I think it's very helpful. Yeah. If you wanted to reference. read something, you know, <laughs> just cue yeah, no, that couple minutes that <laughs> you feel bored. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good reference guide. Uh, there's no much out there. So I think with that, at least people know what there's all the species that you can get that from Mexico. You can get from Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've been getting calls. We, we send that on a, on a, to all our customers' database, and there's been a lot of response that they, they are interested on some more of the species that we can get over there. So yeah, we're willing to share a copy with you guys. You can, I think, I already do the setups. You can download from the web page. Yes, so yes, so if you go to surfplusturf.com, you can access the catalog and you can download and you will see all the species that we have. M maybe there's mistakes. We try to do as much perfect as we can, but uh, there's... Uh, yeah, just when he was going through it, you know, try to complete the the catalog, I noticed 10 mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, he just right away called me, hey, fix this, fix that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but it's there, it's out there. Yes. You can download. We are printing, as we speak, uh, hard copies. Yep. 
We want to send those on the mail, and you will get those on the mail. Yes. And want to thank you guys again. Like the beginning, you could be anywhere in the world, but you are here with us right now. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. But on our YouTube page, you can see some uh, our podcast, but you can see also some videos on how we cut the fillets. You're gonna start seeing some videos on the on the things that we're down doing down there. We we have a very nice uh, video that came up today on some. Fillet grouper fillets that we're do processing right now. So, yeah, you, know, you have nothing to do. Go check our Surf Plus Turf YouTube channel. There's not much right now, but we have a guy that is gonna be helping us to have a lot of videos over there. Thank you, everybody, and see you next time. Next time, Surf and Turf out. Out.